Hey everybody, I'm continuing this uh, series of illustrations and streaming the process behind the scenes so you get to see the creation of uh, hopefully what eventually will be published and available for purchase. Which will be a tabletop game uh, with cards and dice. So we'll just get the stream set up here and then we'll get going. I've already done the line art for this one. And uh, <coughs> here we go. And get my file set up already. So. Make sure we're good. Okay, sweet. And I'm using all free software for this entire project. So uh, we're in paint.net once again. And we're going to start the coloring process for this leather armor. And uh, what I've done is I've just... Uh, before this starting this video, I've sketched out... Let me turn this down just a little bit. I've sketched out my uh, design for the armor, and then I did, uh, did digital inking over top of it on a separate layer. Then I've cropped it so that um, I, all I have is uh, transparent pixels all, all the way around it. And we're just going to rename this layer color and I'm going to use the magic wand tool to select that All right and with that selected I'll go ahead and create a new layer this is going to be our um, I'll go ahead and set up the layers now this will be our, our shading and that's going to be on multiply at 120 opacity I'll go ahead and set up our highlight layer as well So 120, but on screen mode. Okay, so having a process for myself really helps so that these illustrations will look consistent once they are on cards. Um, I want them to all feel like they're in the same space, in the same game, in the same environment, and uh, not look out of place from each other. So, all right, I'm going to just fill in this. Uh, color layer with my leather color here and then there we go this one there we go then I'll switch back to the brush and uh, I'll pick out maybe then I use this other more uh, olive color for uh, some of these trimmings. Make sure I'm on a normal, I'm on solid color with an eight point brush. I did do something a little bit different with the line art on this one, is I used a, a dot screen pattern brush for some of the, the shading. I just kind of wanted to try it out and and have some texture in the in the shadows. Oops. So one of the things I have to do is lower the tolerance because these are pretty similar colors. There we go. I don't necessarily want this to look like gold or or metal. The studs will be metal, but mostly like maybe a, a different kind of material or a different treatment of the leather on the trim here.
Okay, so I'm just outlining it much like I would do if I was coloring this with markers and just kind of give myself a little bit of a border. But then I switch to the fill bucket tool and then fill it all in. It makes it very fast just to get these flat colors in. So I'll also make these, these kind of straps here, this olive color. I'm working at a very high resolution and I, I have no uh, anti-aliasing on partly to um, <clears throat> to get more speed out of my out of my computer uh, the, the anti-aliasing anti uh, when I'm streaming especially tends to make it think a little bit more but also for this particular style of illustration I actually prefer the uh, super super clean sharp lines you don't see any of the pixel pixelization uh, when these are shrunk down anyway so I might as well just make it more simple and easy on myself So I'm working with uh, very, very solid colors and solid uh, borders, almost like pixel art, but at a very high resolution. You see, I'm, I'm focusing on one side right now because I, I might actually just uh, duplicate because this um, this particular illustration is very symmetrical. I may just copy and paste and then flip my color once I get half of it done. You'll see. You'll see. I'll, I, I'll try it out and see if it works, see if it saves me some time. Because if I can just do half of it and then flip it. Now the line art is different on each side, but the color can be the same. Let me just check the stream here. Okay, on the keyboard, we'll switch to the color uh, picker or the eyedrop tool, and I can pick up colors very quickly and then sort of make quick corrections. Zoom in so I can really see what I'm doing, make sure I get all of these little pieces. I really like using thick, bold lines. It's just kind of the way that I work on paper as well. So. I bring that into my digital process. I'm 
All right, so I get all these pieces of the trim and the and the straps. Let's go ahead and give these little studs a color. And I have a color here that I, I like to use for metal. It's sort of a bluish gray. And it looks really, really cool when it's shrunk down and uh, also looks good printed out. I think this uh, collar here will also be this color. And I think that's pretty much it. So I'm going to try this select half of this. I'm still on the color layer. I'll copy that. I'll paste it. Uh, I want to paste it to a new layer. Paste. I'll go to my layer options up here, flip horizontally. There it is. Now it's a little bit off, but I can I can just go in and clean that up. So I'm just going to merge these together. Okay, and then go back to my magic wand tool. I want to get everything except the transparent pixel selected. And there we go. And now I can go in and just, it's actually still gonna save me a lot of time. I can just go in here and clean some of this up. So my line work is a little bit different. It's not exactly mirrored, but this still saved me a lot of time. Okay, there we go. Just to make sure I don't have anything outside the lines, I'm going to go back to my ink layer and select all of the transparent pixels, invert that selection, then go to my, my color layer, uh, invert it again, and then delete anything there. I see some line work that went outside the lines. No problem. Okay. All right, onto the shading. Very, very simple colors here for the leather armor. The shading, I go back to my brush tool on my shading layer, which we had set up to be uh, 120 on the opacity. It's on, set on the multiply blending mode. I go to a very dark purple color, and this is what I'm going to use for my shadows. So anything that's going to get a cast shadow, I can just kind of draw these in. like so, just like I did with the 
coloring, switching back and forth from the brush and the fill bucket tool. Some of it I'll just go ahead and paint in with the brush. Some cast shadows here in between these straps, kind of create some contrast there, some depth. All these planes of, uh, of leather that kind of overlap each other. We'll, we'll cast shadows on, on, onto each other. So I, I kind of just color it in now. Um, this really is kind of a quick way of um, achieving the, the results that I want. And it just took some trial and error to come up with kind of a process for this. But having kind of this, this cool purple color as my shadow color also helps um, the illusion of, of depth because uh, cool colors seem further away and warm colors seem closer. And I can just use one color, one brush and go over the entire thing after I've got my flat colors done. And I'm not switching back and forth trying to you know, find darker shades of those colors. I just let this this color on multiply blending mode affect all of the colors in the same way. And it actually helps to, to create sort of a uniform tone for the entire illustration. I want a stronger shadow in here that kind of emphasizes the, the, the curve of this. This is not just a, a, like a flat surface. Okay. I can also switch to the eraser tool since I'm doing this on a separate layer and, and just erase some of the shadow if I don't want it there. Very simple setup. All right, in here too, I think I'm gonna have some shadow that comes down sort of on the inside of this big chest piece that. And I might try the same technique where I just do half of this and then copy it and flip it and see if it works just to save time. So as long as my lines are, are contiguous or touching, see, I can just create shapes like this and flood fill them in.
I'm using the uh, Wacom Intuos 4 pen and touch uh, small it's just a it's not it's not a this is not a Cintiq I'm not doing the drawing on the screen although it is also a touch screen and I can if I feel feel like it sometimes my lines can be smoother by just by uh, doing it there on the screen there we go All right, let's try this. So I'm gonna grab the rectangle selection tool, select half of this, right there. Copy, we'll create a new layer, paste, go to the layer, flip horizontally. Okay, I think that did it. We'll merge that together. And there it is, make sure the blending mode, good. And now I can go in and just clean up. Make sure I go back to my brush tool. You'll see me do this too, this little like tooth pattern as kind of some dithering. I do that with my line work. You can. I also do it with the uh, with the shading and, and coloring. Um, just to kind of one uh, to add maybe some texture, but also to imply that these this aren't just uh, separate pieces. It's it's a, a transition that's happening. Okay, um, go back and select my color layer selection and that should do it. I'm going to go to the highlights now and I like to use a light yellow, which is the, the complement of that purple. And so we're going to use a light yellow for the, the highlights. And I think already I'm, I'm going to lower the opacity on this. Yeah, that's better. All 
Ah, uh, I gotta change my flood fill. There we go. So for the highlights, I really uh, just kind of get some of these ridges anywhere where I want it to look like a uh, a dent or a scar on the armor, putting a, a highlight like underneath some of those uh, black lines on the line work. Really makes it to start to feel like it's been cut up or taken some damage. And I like the look of that. I don't want everything to look clean. Give it a highlight right on the ridge of, of these uh, straps and things will help them look a little bit more 3D. And I can even um, Add some highlight over top of the, the some of the shadows if I want some bounced light. What I did just there is just I used the curve tool or the line tool to quickly just create a very thin highlight right there on the edge, so very precise. Might do that here as well. Sometimes just it's just quicker. For this style, it's it's kind of a stealth style shading. There's not a lot of gradients. There's actually no gradients. There's no sort of gradual changes. It's all very um, areas or 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 solid sections of color. But uh, you can see how it it, it does uh, it it works. It's very effective. All right, we're going to go ahead and. Again, save ourselves some time. Copy that highlight, paste it on a new layer, go to layers, flip horizontal. We'll merge that down with our other one. Control M, and there's our highlights. All right, we go in and we can tweak this stuff now. So fix it up a little bit.
actually looks pretty good. zoom out and see how that looks. All right, so this is just four four layers. I've got my solid color layer right here. We got my shading layer, add some depth and dimension. My highlight layer. And this is what it looks like without the line art, and then the line art or the ink on top just really defines everything. All right, we'll go ahead and save that. And then I'm gonna export this as a PNG as well. So this is gonna be one of the treasure cards, one of the uh, items that can be equipped. Yeah, that looks nice. I really like the sleeves here. This was the reference that I that I used. Changed it up a bit. I didn't want all these studs. I just wanted leather. So I did a image search, and you can see it's a, it's fairly similar. But um, I really wanted mine to to pop and also fit in with the world of uh, Ring Ring uh, Rignar. I almost said Ringar. Alright, so then I go into Google Drive. I want to just finish this card. And I'm doing all of the design and layout in Google Slides. I've got a folder for all of my card layouts. Uh, this one, what I started doing is setting up my documents to be twice the size. So actually I started my canvas at uh, um, at 10, 10 by or six by yeah six by ten so twice the size of a three by five card and at 350 dpi. And I think that this will help me kind of have um, more consistent uh, line weight. All right, here's my card layouts. You can see some of the other artwork that I've done. I've gotten uh, a few of the, the player characters here done once it loads in. And I'm starting on the uh, items and treasures that you can get in this game. Here's some of the monsters. And I think what I'm going to do is duplicate this slide because I don't have any uh, item cards set up yet. I'm going to switch to my mouse because it's a little bit easier for this kind of stuff. Okay, so I just duplicated my some of my characters. I'm going to ungroup this stuff. And I think that I actually... I want to grab the Paladin. We'll just work with him because he has the icon that I need um, for this particular card. And we're going to ungroup that. 
Let's bring in the leather armor PNG. There we go. Leather armor color. There it is. Perfect. All right, so this is going to go in place of the paladin, but I kind of want to size it first and just just sort of eyeball the uh, the line weight. Obviously, it's going to also fit on the card. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of my paladin, move my leather armor over. There we go. And I actually want this um, this armor bonus at the top. And then I can get rid of the hit point uh, icon there. That's what I want. But I want this background to be from the, from the treasure cards. So I'm gonna copy that as well. Okay, and I'll just ungroup this. And we'll use this background. Sent to the back. change this so this is a leather armor and I've been using this this sort of uh, As, as like what a feature of this this is light armor light armor as in not heavy and I think that's it I think this card is done Well, thank you guys for watching the this illustration process. We went from from a very very basic sketch, which I did before the stream started. And now we have a highly detailed, rendered, shaded, highlighted, colored uh, set of leather armor. Now in a, a card and designed and ready to go. And it works. I think it looks good with the, uh, the rest of these. As far as I mean, I feel, I feel like it fits in, right? So, uh, we got heroes, we got enemies, and we got treasures. There's the first one. So, thanks for watching. I'll have more coming soon. And stay tuned to, to for, for more news about this uh, tabletop RPG card game, dice game. Uh, I'm really trying to combine all of the, my disciplines, both uh, illustration, drawing, uh, and graphic design, as well as designing a a game a game system. I'm designing all the mechanics and everything for it, and um, I kind of want to in introduce my my viewers to to a, an, another passion of mine, which is um, sort of fantasy and uh, Tolkien esque uh, genre. Um, creating worlds and and kind of creating uh, you know taking just the the, the nature of, of creativity and, and things that I like to do and in, inventing and designing a world and a game 
and putting all of my uh, creative juices into it. So I hope you guys like it. Bye for now. <laughs>